So, how exactly does the GPS function work on the GM30 Plus? Let's find out. One of the features of the Radiotity GM30 Plus that sets it apart from other budget class HTs is its GPS receiver. Together with a fairly new ability to transmit data on GMRS handhelds, these radios allow you to not only know your position via GPS, but also to share your position with others in your group and even query others for their position. The information that's available is latitude and longitude and all the other stuff that's embedded in a GPS signal. When querying others, their relative position is also displayed on a small compass rose display. This information can be handy when out hiking, hunting, or even just at a fair or other large gathering. There are a number of settings you'll need to configure and some other things you'll need to be aware of. So, before we look into those on the radio, here are a couple of things you'll need to keep in mind. While probably obvious, the two radios exchanging data have to be on the same channel. Use one of the simplex channels as you get used to using this feature. It may or may not work through a repeater. That being said, the GMRS data rules say that GMRS radios aren't supposed to transmit data on the 467 megahertz main channels. Those include repeater inputs, so repeaters may be off limits anyway. Feel free to comment below if you know or have a definitive reference. When you've got the GPS function active, you can still transmit on voice. The data transmission starts either at the beginning of the transmission, at the end of the transmission, or both, depending on what you select. Then, when you transmit, you'll send the data info or request as you've specified. Next, the GPS receiver has an additional draw on the battery. Be sure to go into the menus and turn GPS off if you don't need it. Last, you'll need to reserve some time for everyone to set up their radios. You can have your group members set up their radios before you leave for your outing or when you all form up. All of you will need different numbers from 101 to 120 as seen on the contact list in the CPS. These contact numbers are how the radio keeps the data straight. Your radio will come set to ID 100. For this to work, you'll need to have an ID from 101 to 120. Another important thing is that everyone also needs to know what buttons to push to access the various functions and what variables need to be set in the radio. You'll also probably want a piece of paper to jot down the ANI edit menu item for each person's radio. You can also find the ANI ID on the radio info menu. Now, let's take a look at those settings in the radio menu system. So as we start working with the GPS on the GM30 Plus, the first thing you're going to want to do is read through the manual because some of this stuff isn't particularly intuitive. And at the same time, some of the buttons do double duty. And so you're going to want to know what they are. And those are all described here, along with some interesting diagrams that will give you a preview of what you should be seeing here on your radio. So this starts out on... 7.4 the GPS function and I would encourage you to start there and then read through these. Now the other thing that you're going to need to notice is that uh, for to share information the idea of your contacts here um, and this is a picture from the CPS and so I'll show you that on my CPS here you'll need to have these loaded or it won't know what to look for and then we're also going to have to notice that the codes have to match and so that the radios that are part of your group don't have the same codes. Enough of that for now. Let's look at the radio. 
And we'll look at a couple of other things you'll want to be aware of here in the house uh, where the GPS doesn't make it through the roof, but the recording will be better to see where some of these menus are. So when we're outside, I won't spend as much time showing menus because the screens are kind of hard to see in the bright sunlight. So let's take a look at the radios. So obviously you're going to need two radios to do this, and they both need to be on the same channel. And so if you look here, I've got the two-pack that came from Radiodity. They're both on GMRS channel 4. You see the little red pinprick there shows that the GPS is on. But when we get to that screen, you're going to see that it shows searching. Now, even outside when I've played with this, these radios take a minute or two to lock on to the satellites. And so don't get discouraged if it seems like it's taking forever to get a position established code there on your radio. So let's look at some of the menu things that we're going to want to deal with. Okay, so first we're going to go down and let's look at radio settings. And I'm going to go up here since they are at kind of the end of this list. Unfortunately, we can't turn our GPS on and off with a side key. There are just a couple of side key availability there. And the other thing I hope you won't get too frustrated with is that the menu screens do not stay lit very long. And I haven't found a menu item that will allow me to control that. So please bear with me. So we've got the tail, alert, PTT delay, then PTT ID. And we want to turn our PTT ID to either the beginning of the transmission, end of transmission, or both. I'm going to select beginning of transmission. And then I'm going to uh, continue up here. And we want to go to ANI Edit. And so the ANI Edit allows us to edit the number that the radio recognizes for its ANI code. And so you can set that in the CPS. But if you're gathering with friends that are all using this radio, you may have duplicates. And so this is where you would make an edit to that number. And so you can see again how frustrating it is that the menu times out so quickly. So have, now that I've explained it, let me show you what it is so we can keep the menu active. So here's A and I edit, and I can just type it in. So if I wanted 103, and OK. Now my radio is code 103, and I want to make sure that it doesn't have any other 103s in my group. When you get the radio, it's probably going to come as 100. So I'm going to go back and do that again just to show you how it works. And then I'm going to set it to 101. There's really not anything else in this radio settings menu that I'm going to need to worry about. So I'm going to exit out of this, and then I'm going to go down to the GNSS menu, which is where we find the rest of our GPS stuff. And so on, on number one, we can turn it on and off. You can see I have it on. It needs to know where we are. And so I've got a time zone selection here. And here in Arizona, it's a minus 7 from Greenwich Mean Time. And then in GPS mode, I can set GPS, BDS, or GPS and BDS, and I've got it set for GPS only. Now in radio info, all it's given me is the radio, but you can see there that what my radio number is, it's 101. That's that ANI edit that we just did. And so that's what we've got here. And so now we've got the radio set up to do what it is we want. Now let's look at this other radio and get it set properly as well. So this is radio number two. And we're going to go down and we're going to go back to radio settings. TTID, it's both, or it's beginning of transmission. ANI edit, it's 101. Now we just programmed that one to 101, so let's make this one 102. 
and we'll confirm or hit OK. That's all we need to worry about there. So let's exit from this menu. We'll go down to GNSS, open that up. We've got it on. Time zone is 7. So we'll go to GPS mode. So we'll set it to GPS to match the other one. As long as GPS is selected in both or BDS is selected in both, it'll work. But that's what we've got. And so now we've got this radio all ready to go as well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move into GPS mode. And we're going to do that by a long press on P2. And so we've got position success. So I'm kind of surprised the uh, this radio has picked up a signal here in the house. And so it shows where I am. And then now we can start working through our contacts. And so we've got contact one, and it would be against the number that we have uh, encoded in those. And so uh, we could get our position here with contact one by, you know, pressing the press to talk, and it would transmit. Now I can see that my other radio doesn't have a position yet. And so that will have to demonstrate when we're outside but we can use the up and down keys to work our way through. So contact number one is host. And then if we press our menu key, then we can see where we are relative to the other contacts. We go down here, my place, it's just gonna show us in the, in the middle because that of course is where we are. Now to get to contact one or contact two, we would have to do a press to talk, which would cause the radio to send the digital signal to that radio and if it was set to the right frequency it would respond and tell me where it is and so that's what we'll be demonstrating outside hey, if you like videos like this one how about clicking the thumbs up button and subscribing to the gadget talk channel if you haven't already please consider learning more about becoming a channel member by clicking the join button or click the thanks button to make a one-time contribution to support what we do here. Now, let's take the radios outside to get some distance between them and try out both sending and requesting location information. I did this in the evening so that the radio's display was more easily visible to the camera. I also had to figure out that I needed both radios in the 101 to 120 range, so you'll notice that it got dark during the demo. There were also a couple of toddlers playing in a nearby backyard that you'll hear in the audio in the background. And so now you can see here that the my place position on both these are really pretty close. We've got 12.8 uh, on one, 12.7 on the other, 51.1 and 51.1 here on the other. So these two guys are reflecting the same position of where we are. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go down to the other end of this area where I am to generate some distance between these two radios. I'll leave one of them here and take the other one with me and then transmit the position for where I am down there and then request the position for where this radio is up here. So my first shot at sending information from this radio up to the other radio i had made a mistake and so i've got this one now as contact one is the host and the radio's number is 101 and the radio up here up by where that guy is walking his dog is radio number 102 and so you can see i'm at 13.6 and 54.6 so we'll see if we can't send the gps data to that radio so let's give it a try The next thing I want to do is go up to contact number two here and see if I can request the data from there. And that's contact number two. We'll see how it goes. And there we go, 12.6 and 51.2. I think we've broken the code on this. Looking good. 
There's one more thing I want to show you, and that's the map. And so you can see right now that the arrow is pointing to just a little bit south of east, and that's where it is. And then I've got 92 meters to where the radio is. So I'm 92 meters away, and it's east of me. And that's what the display shows here. And so here we are back at the other radio. So you can see here contact number one is number 101 in terms of the radio. It's got a get position indicator and it shows 13.6 and 54.4, which is what was on the other radio at the other end. So I've been able to request data and I've been able to send data. As you saw, the GPS feature is pretty easy to use once you get things set up correctly. Actually, setting things up is probably the hardest task, and that's not that difficult. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Join me over here for my full review of the Radiodity GM30 Plus GMRSHT. Thanks for watching.